What's up? Welcome back to Real Reds Talk. My name is Sam. I'm joined by Nigerian Prince of Calm, Chivy, and an uh, Indian Nightmare, Shereas. Lads, how are we? We good? We good? Yeah, yeah, yeah. doing fairly well. Doing fairly well. Didn't expect this introduction either way, but... <laughs> Well, we were, talk- we were talking about wrestling, so I was like, yeah, everybody's got a nickname, haven't they? Yeah. So let's- well, no, 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 no. You two are talking about wrestling. Oh, yeah. That's that's true. That yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Chivy's not interested in wrestling. He's not, no, yeah. no interest. Not. UFC, man, UFC. Yeah. That's, that's where it's at. That's for After Dark. We'll talk about it on After Dark. Yeah. But, yeah, uh, a lot yeah. of news going on Manchester United. Not necessarily on the pitch a lot of stuff coming going off side the pitch with appointments and people leaving etc we're going to touch on that today i touched on a little bit yesterday in the new show but then we're going to talk about later in the show is we're going to go through the players that we think we could sell this summer how much we could get for them kind of money what sort of teams it could go to that kind of stuff and we're also going to say whether we'd want to sell them or not as well so stick around for that that's going to be towards the end of the show but first big story yesterday uh john murta is officially leaving manchester united um, he's agreed with the club to mutually part ways as Jason Wilcox, I believe, is going to come in with Dan Ashworth and Omar Barada, and he's basically going to take up that role. Darren Fletcher is going to stay on at the club. His current role is technical director, but he will move on to a different type of role because they want to keep him at the club. First off, Chivy, John Murta, long time coming, leaving. Yeah, this is going to be like the biggest loss since Fergie. <laughs> I couldn't even say it with a straight face. No. Like I tried to say it with a straight face. No. <laughs> I couldn't even say it with a straight no. face, honestly. Um, yeah, it's no surprises. Um, I think everyone saw that coming. You know, with, with, with the sort of expertise coming in, uh, I don't think his his skills, in quote, were, yeah. were required anymore. So, yeah, I mean, he goes. I, I'm not surprised. It was, it was, it was bound to happen. But it's such a big relief because it's just further assurance to me that we're sort of moving in, the, you know, in the direction that we need to be moving in, yeah. and that is bringing in football people, people who are experts. We've said this for years and years, and we wanted people who knew football, who are experienced in, in, in the industry, to come in, not just you know people learning on the job. It's such a huge. I don't know how we're able to carry on this long with so many people occupying top positions at Manchester United that had zero experience. Just banking so, yes, on it. Um, There's literally financial so, people and bankers. It's ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. Like if we, if, if I put my, any of us here put our CVs next to them, as far as football <laughs> expertise. Same amount. <laughs> same amount. Like same amount. We probably even know more because we watch football more than them. But yeah, have, um, yeah, it's, it's um, just more assurance that he's gone. I'm happy that you know uh, we're moving in the direction that we're, we we were meant to be moving in. So yes, it's good to see him go. Yeah, uh, Shreya, so you can feel free to touch on that as well. Obviously, the I've thought there was another thing about uh, we're going to expedite or speed up the process of hiring Jason Wilcox and um, Dan Ashworth now. But there was a story that came out saying Dan Ashworth is not going to be ready for the summer transfer window, but we will probably have Jason Wilcox and Omar Brado are going to head that up. Do you feel a lot more confident going into this summer than, say, last summer when John Murta and Richard Arnold were jetting about Barcelona four or five times, going to Turin and getting bitch slapped by Adrian Rabiot's mum and his agent and stuff like that? Do you feel more mm-hmm. confident going into this summer? I definitely do. Because the thing is, they were just not... like Genuinely, they actually didn't really have any idea on how to proceed about things. Like, they genuinely didn't. The whole saga with Frank and Young went on for too long. Even with Rabio, it went on for too long. And in the end, we actually, you know, ended up going for someone like Casemiro. You know, just completely suddenly out of the blue and within four, I think it just took us four to five days to actually, you know, complete the signing of Casemiro. So it just didn't sit right as to, you know, how we completely shifted our direction from, you know, two players like De Jong and Rabio, and then suddenly we moved to someone like a Casemiro, you know, completely out of the blue. Um, but yes, I do think, you know, that going into this summer window, I do have a lot of different expectations. I Because I do expect us to be linked with, you know, certain different players. You know, I expect a different, you know, a different mindset and a different way as to how United conducts himself, you know, itself in transfer windows rather than, you know, how we've been going about signings like 
you know, t- it takes us to, like working on just one deal at a time, whether it is an outgoing or whether it is an incoming, just working on one deal at a time. And even though we are working on just one deal, it takes us like an entire month just to get that deal, you know, through the line. So I expect us to be more swift. I expect us to be more aggressive when it comes to, you know, uh, the negotiations we do, you know, rather than overpaying, you know, completely over the line for certain players, we are able to, you know, do some cheap deals, do some smart deals. And at the same hand, the kind of players we actually go for, you know, I do expect a change in that as well, you know, with the kind of people coming in, like Dan Ashworth, even though he's not here, but Omar Berada is going to be coming in uh, and Wilcox will be in as well, I think, by the time the, yeah. the summer window actually kicks on. So I do expect a transition. You know, when it comes to the type of players we bring in. And I think right now this team actually needs that because we've gone through that sort of a saga where we go in for, you know, these 70 million rated players, 75 million rated players, 80 80 million rated players. And I've seen other clubs, you know, at the same stature going for players, you know, you know, around the price range of 30, 35 million. They end up, you know, uh, you know, signing like four to five players a window. And because, you know, you end up even the you know those signings might not work but because you just paid 30 or 35 million it isn't as much of a loss yeah. as when it you know becomes when you end up going completely over the line on, on a certain player and then they don't generate as much value then it becomes an even greater loss yeah no I th- that's the point i was going to bring up to chivy because me and chivy have spoke about this for god knows how long well, probably since the channel's inception we, people say oh, our scouting is awful chivy but we've gone through scouting and players that have been identified and they've been great players Julian Alvarez Christopher Nkunku like the list can go on and on so our scouts are clearly identifying decent talent so we clearly have some sort of network and you said yourself you want to go into this transfer window and when we sign someone you want to be like who's that you don't want to be like yeah. oh I know this guy and so like the Aaron Wampasaka we had a list of 500 right backs and Aaron Wampasaka is the best one available is he is he though? Like, do you know what I mean? And then chasing Jaden Sancho for two years, pay, overpaying him, giving him stupid wages. What do you want to see? Like, going to summer, like, Therese has just touched on what he thinks is going to happen. What do you want to see? Like, in terms, do you want to say goodbye to, like, the ridiculous wages and you want to identify <coughs> talent that nobody's heard of, bring them in, develop them? Is that what you want to see from United going forward? Yeah, pretty much. But well, at the end of the day, like, I just want to see a strategic approach. Right. Exactly. So even if yeah, a strategic approach. If if we have the money to spend big, fine. If if we don't have the money, that's fine. Just make sure that the player we're getting fits the profile that is going to suit a system that we're playing in. So we're not just buying a player just for the financial, you know, purpose or just for the name. Basically, we, we've scouted this player. He fits the profile. He's coming in, and it's strategic. It's not just you know, it's not just. You know, like what it used to be where we're just, you know, oh yeah, such and such is free, just buy him. You know, yeah. we, we said it a few times, the window where Ronaldo came, like what amount of scouting went through? You don't yeah. need to scout for Gerard Ferrer You don't need to scout for Jason Sancho. Casemiro. You don't need to scout. For... Yeah, like none of that. So it's like, I want to see, you know, targeted approaches, you know, to, you know, this player that fits this system. That's what I want to see. Of course, I prefer it if we got someone who wasn't, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm done with big names personally. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I'm yeah. done with big names. I want to get an unknown player, someone who no one's ever heard of from fucking Venezuela. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> like how we put yes. in last year deal, you know, someone completely different, someone we've Just never someone, even heard of. Yeah. Someone we haven't heard of. Someone the press doesn't even have any background story on that they can, you know. Just someone who's ready to just put in the work, who, who fits the profile. That's that's all I care about. I don't care about big names. This is the first summer that we're going into that I'm not interested in what player we're going to get. Like, absolutely not. Yeah. You can see yeah, it already just, as uh, well. That like The press is trying to link big names and you just like... Be, no, I, no, no, I can't be arsed with it. I can't... I can't lie, but you because, know, United, United are interested in Osman. Like, no, no, we're not. We're not interested in Osman. Yeah. Like, why are you? Why are we doing this? Like, it's ridiculous. Honestly, six six years ago, if you if if you told me, I don't know, six seven years ago, whatever. If you told, there was a time in, in, in then where if you told me that I was gonna have Falcao, Ibrahimovic, and Cavani oh. play for my United, I would rip. I'll be like, no way, because these yeah. are strikers that I absolutely idolise, and all of them have come in. Not what did we, we got a Carling Cup, I think. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Not yeah. words. So, Not words at all. 
Sorry, I keep calling it a calling cup. No, no, it's all it's good. Better. I know yeah. what you mean. I know what you mean. So. Car bar cup, yeah. Car bar cup. Um, yeah, so I, yeah, I just want I want targeted approaches. I want strategic. If we're to believe what Ineos is supposed to be, then you know, I, th- those are the kind of signings I want. So. Yeah. The final, the final thing I wanted to touch on, and I'm going to move on to the next story. Shreyas, obviously, we've been, for lack of a better term, bent over a barrel for most transfers over the years. Like a player's valued at X amount and we end up paying double, triple, whatever yeah. it is, a ridiculous amount. And then we also end up paying through the arse in wages. Like use Jaden Sancho, for example, paid 70 odd million for him. And we saw that as a bargain because he was valued at 90, 100 the year before. So we waited a year. But then we end up paying through the arse in wages. He's on like 350K a month and he's not even at the, yeah. a week and he's not even at the club anymore. He's on loan somewhere else and we're still paying his wages. Stuff like that has to stop, right? Like we have to go in. Like I've already seen there's um, a striker who's at Sporting Lisbon at the minute, um, Jokeres. Jokeres, yeah. He was very highly rated in Coventry. Went to Sporting Lisbon, and now they're quoting a hundred million for him. Like fucking ridiculous price. Like he's not played at a top level yet, and he's getting quoted a hundred million. Like stuff like that has to stop, right? This summer we can't be going and paying hundred million for players. Like even though he might no, turn no. out fantastic, you can't be going out and doing that, can we? Yeah, but I, I, the thing is, right now we're not on that. Le- you know, we're genuinely not in that state to actually go out and get another hundred million signing in because this team doesn't really need that at the moment. Right now, this team, what this team actually needs is they need a controlled and you know a very controlled and systematic player who can come in. You know, I think it it definitely you know goes down to the fact as to who the manager will be next season as well. Yeah. But whoever has to come in, whether it's it, even if it's Ten Hag who's going to be staying the, you know, uh, next season as well. Whoever comes in, you know, it needs to be someone who can actually work in this sort of a system. What you know, and someone who <clears throat> is able to blend into this team. Because I've seen it enough, you know, uh, you know, on a, a lot of occasions that a certain player comes in, it takes them a whole one season just to integrate into the team, and then people start expecting, you know for them to turn up in the second season i think that that at least uh, i think at other clubs as well that time gap isn't as much like even if people move from a different league to a club like a liverpool or a city or any other club they integrate fast and they are able to you know they start turning up within you know within like a couple of months itself so i think genuinely things need to change at united as to how we target players and especially you know when you got someone like a Hoyland, it doesn't really make sense to go for someone like him. You need someone who can come in and Hoyland can learn off from. You need someone who can provide him with that sort of a balance. That, you know, if he's not present, then this player can come in and can do a job. And at the same time, can mentor Hoyland into, you know, growing into that number nine position. Because he's still quite a young player. And, and we overpaid. As far as Gyok- we overpaid yeah, him as well. Exactly. And as far as Gyokeres is concerned, he's also a very young player. You know, yeah. and once again, he's... He's never played in the Premier League. You know, it's... Hoyland is... Like I mentioned a lot of times before, Hoyland was a gamble signing. He's come in and he's done a fantastic job and now people do know what to expect from him and if he does get service, then we see a probably a, probably an even better version of Hoyland in this team. Yeah. But... <clears throat> he was a gamble signing for a 72 million striker. And yeah. if we go in for someone once again, uh, you know, the Portuguese league... 100 million on just a striker who isn't even, you know, supposed to be a number one striker because I think at least for the, you know, foreseeable future, Hoyland is supposed to be a, uh, you know, number one striker. So going in for someone who's going to be backup and then spending 100 million on him doesn't really make any sense. Yeah, I, I think we definitely need to, the approach that, um, like, you think about teams like Liverpool, like, I hate praising Liverpool, but it is what it is. They go out and they get players for decent money, decent wages. They identify the talent that works and it fits into a system. Like they went out and got McAllister, who everybody knew about, to be fair. Wasn't a scouted thing, but 35 million for McAllister and he's probably their best player this season. Yeah. Stuff like that. Like that's what United need to be doing. We need to be targeting that sort of player, that sort of money, that sort of identification. But we'll move on. Um, Rob Dawson has spoken on. Ten Hag and Ineos' relationship with Ten Hag. Um, he said Sir Jim Radcliffe and Ineos are not convinced by Ten Hag but a decision will be delegated to a new football leadership team planned to be headed by incoming sporting director Dan Ashworth and technical director Jason Wilcox. 
Despite Ineos having reservations at Ten Hag, one issue facing the club is the lack of stand- standout candidates to take over, which we did touch on in a previous show. We went through the managing candidates and there was no sort of manager where we were like, yes, him, that's the guy. And I think that's the sort of what we're facing at the minute. Um, but Fabrizio Romano tweeted out, I think it was literally within the last hour. Let me just find it. There it is. Uh, Manchester United want to keep monitoring the situation around Ten Hag, but so far the conversations between him and Ineos have been positive. There isn't anything close in terms of discussions with other managers, so journalists contradicting each other, as always. Chivy, I know you're quite outspoken on Ten Hag. Do you think that's a reason to keep him because the lack of options out there, or are you happy to take a risk, like, if they get rid of him, take a risk on a manager, say, like, a Ruben Amarin or a Julian Nagelsmann, that kind of stuff. Would you be happy to take a risk when we're restarting this sort of whole transfer thing from the beginning again? Absolutely. Absolutely. I'll be more than happy to take a risk. If you listen to, I think, I believe it was Jim Rakulis' first interview or second after after the takeover, I knew that this was a person who wants to watch good football because he talked about the Real Madrid and Man City game I don't know if you guys watched that interview yeah I think it did yeah when he was talking about how attractive the football was and you could tell that he wanted something like that now if this was a if this was a what you call it a a dress rehearsal for next season Ten Hag is failing badly like if he's trying to impress the Radcliffe Ten Hag is feeling badly, and I do not want to believe that they've seen this with the sort of people that we have in, well, the sort of people that are coming in. I don't want to believe that they've seen this and are happy with it, because if they're happy with that, then we should be worried. Now, this is nothing personal against Ten Hag. I, I don't have any sort of agenda or anything. It's nothing personal. It's just, it's just the facts. It's just that, you know, everybody can see it, that it's the football is chaotic. And we need to bring someone in with a with a clear style of football, a winning style of football. And I don't think this manager does that at the moment. So I'll, I'll be more than happy to take a risk on, you know, to have a look around, you know, scout some coaches, talk to, you know, go and get someone who who's, who's, who, who has balls, who's, who's you know, I, I want to have an obsessive manager, a manager who's obsessed with football, that kind of, you know, pet kind of mentality. Pep has a deserve behavior. People are just crazy. Almost people on the spectrum. I don't want a normal person. I don't want a normal guy who's just a regular dude. Like if, you went, if, you went to, if you went to dinner or I had a pint with him, do you just be talking about football, like, non-stop? Yeah, or something. Yeah. Or they'll just be, like, I don't know, slightly autistic yeah. or something. There's someone who's not normal. <laughs> that all he cares about is football, that kind of thing. <laughs> That's it. Yeah, I don't want him to wear a suit and look cute and look. No, I want someone who's just eats, sleeps, drinks football every day, and wants to implement a winning, winning mentality. Yeah. You know, I'm not saying go and get Inzaghi or Thiago Mota, but th- these are people that have revolutionary styles of football now. Yeah. That, yeah. that is very, yeah. very different to what everybody else knows, and we know that football changes over the years. I mean. It, it, it was only a few couple of years that you would have a typical number 10. Now that position is actually, it's fading out. You don't have, yeah. football is changing. It went from 4-4-2 from when I was watching it to 4-2-3-1 to 4-3-3. To so it, it changes all the time. And you have to be one of the first people to to actually adopt this new style that is able to, you know, that, that counters the, you know, the norm. So I'm more than happy for us to... Um, to take the risk, but not just on anyone. Uh, hopefully, if we're taking a risk, it'll be of someone that we've scouted, we've we've identified that suits a profile, a winning profile that we can bring into the club. As far as what Rob Dawson was saying, um, I believe it, or yeah. I choose to believe it, mm-hmm. to be honest, um, because I don't think the evidence right now, and I don't think Tenag is doing you know himself any favors in terms of the way he plays. And as far as what um, Romano was saying, even if they wanted to go for someone else, like they're not going to open the. <laughs> if 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 Ineos was was thinking of going for another manager, then obviously not going to make that clear to Ten Hag. Obviously, yeah, they yeah. would keep the relationship going. So it's not something that they would say, "Hey man, 
you know, you're off at the end of the season sort of thing. Yeah, it's shape, something shape that you would off, keep. We're getting this guy. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So you keep it. You keep the the relationship cordial at the moment. So yeah. pretty much, you know. So I kind of, I kind of, I think they're both right at the same mm-hmm. time. So, yeah. yeah. Uh, Therese, yeah, just on that, like obviously, should be mentioned Thiago Mata there, Roberto De Zerbi, Julian Nagelsmann is going to be available. There's there's a lot of young, I don't want to say unproven managers because they've all managed fairly top clubs, like uh, Thiago Mata's at Bologna, De Zerbi's at Brighton, he's Sassuolo, Nagelsmann's obviously managed Bayern and the German national team, so there's nothing to be sniffed at. Is like we went through these candidacy. Where are you leaning at this point? Are you like, and just get to the end of this season, and then give Ten Hag the opportunity to rebuild? Or are you in the same camp as Chivy now, where you're like, let's pull the trigger, because this season's been clear that we're not, we're not progressing from the season before. Like, where are you at? Where are you feeling with that? And where do you think Ineos are with that? I think Ineos definitely will be very cutthroat. I think ever since they've come in. One thing that they've made it clear is that next summer there are going to be a lot of changes, and they expect us, you know, a certain level of football and a certain level of your, uh, you know, achievement and accomplishments to go with Manchester United. And they, and and I think those achievements will are something that you know whoever the manager is going to be next season has to deliver. So as far as Ten Hag is concerned, at at least at the moment, I would say I'm not convinced at all. And the reason is not just I, I get that we've had injuries. But the problem is just the biggest problem for me has been that he actually intends to play this way, like the way we are playing right now. He actually intends to play this way. It's not even like that he's coming out and saying that you know there is I need to play a certain way, but because of the players that I've not got, I'm not able to play a certain way. The thing has been even when we've had those certain players, he intends to play this way where there are so many holes in our midfield. Um, can I just interrupt? And, Sorry, Shreyas. Can I just interrupt yeah. you? Because you just touched on yeah. something I want to bring up. There's a Twitter account. I think I shared it in the group chat. The Devil's DNA. Um, and he basically goes through tactics and why things... It's basically, he went through Ajax's run when they went to the Ajax, uh, to the Champions League semi-final and they won the, the Dutch League. He basically played the exact same way he's playing right now. But in the Dutch League it's not as demanding and you're not pressed a life out by the opposition so you're able yeah. to get away with this openness that he has in the midfield and take that risk because it paid off more often he's got to the Premier League and he's trying to play that way and he's, it's not paying off because of the intensity of the league the way the defenders press the way the fullbacks uh, are way more attacking than the Iron Dutch League he's underestimated the league but he's continuing with this style and I think it either comes down to stubbornness or his lack of plan B. Or I don't know which one it is. But yeah, conti- sorry, continue your point. I just wanted to put that yeah. in because I, I, I found it fascinating. I, I think, but as far I, as I the Dutch that, League is concerned, uh, yeah. I think as far as the Dutch League is concerned, one thing that, because I have followed Ten Hag a lot at Ajax and I've seen his run in the Champions League, one thing was that actually attracted me towards him was he was a very possession based manager. Exactly. Like he was genuinely was a very very position based manager. You get more like time. Went, you get more time yeah, on the ball. But, you get less. Yeah. Hassle, and even less when pressure. even when he went up against the likes of Juventus and against Madrid, they dominated possession on the ball. Yeah. They genuinely mm-hmm. dominated. Even you know team like Bayern, who, who I would say in comparison to now were a much 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 deadlier team at that sort sort of time. He was able to match them when it came to possession and even when it came to you know their attacking prowess. Even though. I would say when you compare them, you know, when you compare the attacking outlets that Bayern had at that point of time, Ajax never had that, but they were still able to match them quite, you know, quite uh, differently, and it was quite effective as well. Ever since he's come in, I'm not not quoting on last season, but this season, it's never been that United are a team that work on possession. It's never been a situation where United are a team that dictate, you know, their presence in the game. And on top of that, another thing is that. It's not sustainable to have twenty plus shots every single game when you're a goalkeeper. Fucking closer to thirty. Never mind yeah, twenty. I'd be exactly. all right with twenty. It's fucking and, closer to thirty and, at this point. And even when it came up, Ten Hag had to say that it doesn't really make a difference because we are not really conceding as many goals. Shots don't really matter as much when you're not conceding as many goals, but they do actually matter. Yeah. Because it actually shows that the opposition team is actually dominating you. Like teams like Brentford, teams like Luton are having 25 or 27 shots on your target. 
it is going to make a big difference and i i genuinely don't think that it is a, this this sort of a system is something that can be sustainable in the premier league especially when all you actually depend upon is transitions that you win the ball back from the opposition and then you hit them on the break or then you you know uh, are able to make, you know, create an overload on the flank and then go for goal it's not going to work that way and we've seen it throughout the course of the season that even if this sort of system has to work it can work for 50 to 55 minutes but after that it will crumble you're not winning titles it will happen you're not winning trophies exactly my point it and that's where the season has been so up and down and i just think that no matter who you put in this midfield like mm-hmm. you can genuinely go and sign rodri or chuameni or whoever you want to sign in this midfield even they will actually get overexposed here it's like so, some like so, on certain occasions like it, you know if i take passing and overall form out of the picture i just really don't think that even if we had someone different than casemiro in this team i really don't know if they would have done and you know any an even better job than him i think it would genuinely have been the same scenario all over again because it i think any six in this sort of a system can genuinely not work like it 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 is impossible especially in the premier league when you've got four attackers running on you every single time you lose out on the ball and it's when you're not a possession based team and you're giving the opposition the leverage to actually have that amount you know have that amount of ball on you and they're you know gunning for you on every single time when you lose out on the ball it's never going to work especially you know when you've got just one player actually trying to mark every single one of them kevy uh, you wanted to come in like before yeah, we move on yeah yeah i'll be i'll be very interested to see this analysis that you're talking about because i'll, I'll drop it in the chat for you in like yeah. after this i don't see any similarities whatsoever with the way yeah. Ajax played when Ten Hag exactly. was there and the way we play, it's not the similarity of play. Point. It's the system, the way he's set up. That's second it. thing. Ten Hag said it out of his own mouth. He said, "We're not playing that style of football." He said that last month, was yeah. it two months ago. Yeah, he said that he last said, season. Yeah, he said he said it. He said that style of football is not what we're yeah. playing. So it's not like you know this whoever this person is. I'm sure he's done his due diligence. I'm just you know, you know and I'm not doubting what he's saying. I just. I would like to see the analysis to mm-hmm. be able to, but then based on what he said, it do, it doesn't make any sense to me personally because even the manager has come out and said that we're playing something completely different, and the eye test shows us that we're playing something completely different. Ajax never played this quick um, transition football. It was it was a passing game where they walked. It. He played the um, what's his name, Johan Cruyff style of football. This mm-hmm. what Pep has implemented at Barcelona, kind of. At Barcelona and at Bayern Munich, just building the ball back, winning it quickly, that sort of football, high pressing and all that. Well, that's where you need a lot of tech. That's why the the, the the analysis, like, there's a, a few clips where the forwards are pressing high to make the mm-hmm. force the defenders into mistakes, and basically you win the ball higher up top. But with United, he's doing it really narrow, really. Like he's putting it. The, the focus is really narrow, so they're just pressing the centre backs in defensive midfield. So all the defenders yeah. have to do is pass out to the wing backs, and they're away. So there's an there's easy no out. coordination. They don't even need to do that. They just didn't. They need yeah. They just give it back to the keeper, and then here's the thing: because we press like we, yeah, we press yeah, we press yeah, we press like two players. Like this is me telling you. That's what I'm saying. The centre backs. You know, they just press the centre backs. Yeah, and press the full backs exactly. as well, yeah. which is what they were doing at Ajax. Just, so yeah, I, you know. Um, I'll be interested to see see that analysis, but I I I, I don't see any similarities yeah. at all. And um, for me, um, with immediate effect, right? Like sack him last week, basically. Like mm-hmm. after Brentford, like he should have gone because there's nothing else to play. The for. Brentford game was a massive letdown. Like, he should have gone. Was a yeah. Let-down. So this 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 see But then obviously, I'm still I still haven't recovered from the Brentford game. Yeah. So. Forget, forget Liverpool, forget Chelsea. Yeah. That game is still so. I'm still emotionally involved, but the, maybe it's the right thing to do to keep him to the end of the season. And then, yeah. yeah, the Bournemouth, what the Bournemouth one at home, that was the one that like made me go, "This is not, just, this is not working." Just getting absolutely battered and overrun at home by Bournemouth. Yeah. You, you see, the thing was, even when we had those 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 defeats, I still had the faith that he would watch that. And implement something different. Exactly. I he think makes certain kept, no. tweaks at least. I, 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 exactly. I watched that yeah. defeat so, and I was like, I think this is it. This yeah. Is so, so I, I, I was still like, okay, 
it happens. Like we think, you know, it's football. You you lose games. So he goes back to the drawing board. We try something different. No, yeah. it was the same thing over and over yeah. again. Now here's my thing. I don't. I'm not Ten Hag out because we're losing games. That's not the reason. No. I don't mind that. It's like you've seen, you've seen it's things, how we lose. Yeah, how we it's lose. how it's happening, and it's the fact that there's nothing to believe in. So even yeah. if we're trying a system that shows some promise that we can see working in a year, I'm more than happy if we're 10 or 12, because yeah. I know that in the long run, we will get where we're going. But there's nothing that I can hold on to. There's nothing I can, I can put forward and say, this is what we're walking towards. I don't see it. So yeah. this is yeah. the reason. So it's not yeah. because, it's not because we're six or not because we're losing games. Just show me something mm -hmm. that yeah. I can believe in. Just give me some hope that I know that in the next year, we can challenge for Champions League. We're not even trying to win. Yeah, know, final, the, the final. Year. Let's just try and challenge. Yeah. So, final yeah. point, so. Shreyas, and then we'll move on to the selling thing. Sure, sure, sure. Otherwise, we'll run over. Yeah. yeah, I think for me it was the Tottenham game. Like when we played Spurs at home. I actually expected it to be a game where I couldn't, you know, enjoy it a bit because, you know, the first thing that came into my mind was Spurs play a high line, Villa mm -hmm. played a high line and we, you know, we were able to counter them quite well. So I expected that, you know, maybe this game we are able to, you know, do something pretty much in the same direction and actually get a win. And I think in the first half we were like leading 2-1 or something. It wasn't convincing at all, but the second half clicked on and the moment the second half clicked, Bentenkor had the ball. He just walked, like he genuinely, he just walked, centrally he just walked like this. Then he came in front of Onana and he just passed the ball into the goal. Yeah. And that's when I thought that this is not something that can actually be worked upon. Because, even, you know, throughout that sort of a game, it was Spurs made one pass, Spurs made the second pass. And the moment they made the second pass, they were at our box. Yeah. It's two passes so, for our midfield. It's always two passes and then they're in. It's insane. Absolutely and insane. What I was thinking at that point was that this is not even like a Man City that we are playing or, you know, that sort of a team. We are playing Spurs who in their respect are having a pretty good season. But still, you're playing, you know, you're coming up against Spurs. And if they are able to counter you so well, there's no way that, you know, you can expect yourself to actually, you know, play against teams like, you know, Arsenal, Liverpool and City and then expect to, you know, have any sort of dominance or any sort of presence during the sort of that, that sort of a game. And mm -hmm. it's just been overexposed again and again and again. And one thing that has definitely changed, I would say, in Ten Hag from last season is last season he used to make a lot of changes within games itself. Like yeah. when he used to see that something isn't working, he used yeah. to make changes itself in the you know he's within the you know, decisions. Four, it, now he's making weird decisions. Yeah, yeah and, his in-game his in-game management was was on. And he just sticks to it. And he the, yeah. the fact is he doesn't change anything at all. He might make substitutions, but we still play the very same way and I think that is uh, and that is something that genuinely hampers us a lot and it's been overexposed again and again and again this season and against teams like you mentioned Bournemouth we lost to Fulham at home because of it yeah. because of it as well we lost to Forest I think uh, yeah. you know moving we playing them away so it's happened on numerous occasions yeah. and one thing that uh, we mentioned we mentioned a lot of times is that it doesn't matter if you don't really get as many points against the top six if you are actually, you know, making your case to, you know, end up in the top four, what matters is your games yeah. against, Look you know, teams like Crystal Palace, Look Fulham, at Liverpool. Uh, Liverpool, Liverpool. Yeah. Liverpool's record against top six is not great, but they'll fight yeah. for a title. Like, yeah. Because they get, they actually get all their points. They, they don't drop points when they come up against these sort of teams like Palace and Bournemouth. They they actually suck in all their points against those sort of teams. And yeah. if you're not able to win your you know win games against these sort of teams, you've not got your you know you you you're generally not in a position where you can say that you know you're gonna make top four. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, it's a fascinating discussion, and I really enjoyed it. I hope everybody in the chat enjoyed it as well. There's like twenty odd people in the chat, so and it's quiet though. Nobody's talking. Comments, questions, get them in. Yeah. We'll move mm -hmm. on to the next bit anyway. My cat's just opened my door and walked in, so You've got he a appears. Cat. Yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> when does if, this happen? If he appears on camera, then uh, yeah. yeah, he's there. Right, let's move on. So, Shreyas, you had an yeah. idea in the chat. We wanted to go through the team, yeah. um, mostly first team players, and see how much money we could make from sellable assets. Because obviously, there's still constrictions around FFP and what's the other. Is it SRP? What's the other? Yeah. Whatever it is. Yeah. Whatever it is. Whatever it is. It's going to constrict us in the summer, basically, spending-wise. 
So we've come up with a list of first team players that are sellable. Obviously, there's a couple of players who are, would be on this list, but they're leaving for free, the likes of Raphael Varane, Anthony Martial, leaving for free. So we're not getting any money for them. So yeah. we've not included them. And then there's obviously players who are definitely probably won't be leaving, the likes of uh, Hoyland, the likes of Kobe Mainu, Onana, that kind of stuff. So we've yeah, just yeah. brought it down to sellable assets and stuff like that. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through and how much we could get for them, where we could see them, who could see buying, or where they could see going. I've also got the transfer marks uh, valuations. So if you're unhappy with the valuations, wasn't my valuation. Transfer mark is valuation. So take up with it. Yeah. Right, first yeah. name on the list. I've got him on screen. The forgotten man, Donny van der Beek. He's currently on loan at Frankfurt. He had an unsuccessful, unsuccessful loan spell at uh, Everton where he got injured. He's been multiple times injured for us. You thought with Ten Hag coming in, he's going to be this is finally his opportunity. Ten Hag just doesn't fancy the kid at all. His valuation, according to transfer marks, is seven million. I would be surprised if we get seven million for this kid. But Shreyas, what, what do you think? I think once again, I think Donny is someone who will leave. Uh, I think the journey has just ended, and I think maybe I think Frankfurt do really like him. And they do want to actually get him in next season. So if if they are interested, probably you get about, I think at max the best case scenario get about eight or nine million, at max. You reckon but we yes, get over val- we get over his value then? Like we get over seven? Yeah, yeah. I think at max. But as things are looking right now, I just think that with Donny, it's just not worked. Like no. it's just not clicked at United. And I think probably the window where it could have clicked for him, he he just wasn't used. In that in that uh, in that window, so I think yeah, just hopefully I think wherever I just hope that you know wherever he goes, he has a good you know he has a good time, yeah. you know he he it works out for him eventually wherever he goes. Chivi, do you care about this or not interested? Yeah, well, seven. Well, no, no, no. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let him leave. So, uh, yeah. uh, no, nah, no, nah, I like I like Donny. I really like him. Man. It's 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 painful. To yeah. see that it didn't work because I really I love technical yeah. players. I mean, he's one of them ones. He's a very intelligent player. His his positioning, it just wasn't used properly. Um, if we get seven mil for him, that's fine. Like whatever we get, let's just take it and then just let him go on and just build yeah. build his career. I don't want us to haggle over him. Let's just let him go for whatever it is. Yeah, just take it off. Uh, let him yeah. go with his career. Yeah. yeah. Right. Next one. Big name. Jane Sancho, currently on loan at Dortmund, bought for, was it 74, I believe? 74 million? Yeah, dollars? about 74, 75 million. Yeah. Um, big wages, came to United, everybody is excited, including myself. I thought, got one of the best wingers in Europe, and he was. He was scoring goals, assists, was top of his game, and it just hasn't worked under several managers. Oli wanted him badly, didn't work under him. Ten Hag gave him time off didn't work under him he's not lighting it up at Dortmund he's doing alright he's doing okay but he's, he's doing not, okay yeah he's not lighting yeah. it up like he's not what he was previously I think his future might depend on Ten Hag I think if Ten Hag yeah. goes he may get another opportunity here however if Ten Hag is staying next season he's probably gone in the summer and his valuation on transfer marks this is fucking hilarious this is 25 million <laughs> on transfer marks I would hope to get think, a lot more than that I would hope to get 40 45 maybe I don't know about you Shireas but yeah that's where I'm thinking I think best case scenario I think the only club right now who is even interested in actually signing him back is Dortmund Yeah. so in that aspect Dortmund does have an advantage because they know United do want to sell him as of now and I think if we I just really think that, you know, right now, next season, even if Sancho doesn't end up leaving and stays at the club, we'll still be getting a winger regardless. Whether it's an Olise or someone, whoever it is. I think a winger is definitely coming to United next season. So, you've already got him. Uh, you've already got, uh, you know, the new winger coming in. Then you've got Garnacho already at the club. You've all, you still got an, another winger in Rashford at the club. So, and Anthony is there as well on top of that. So, I think right now, if you look at players who you could sell, Sancho definitely comes under that list as to you know you know who you know you could sell him. I think if he does kicks if he does have a stronger finish to the season at Dortmund, 
maybe you get 30 million for him but i don't expect us to you know like get 40 45 for him i just i think dortmund are pretty smart as well you know in the way they actually use him on the pitch as well they're pretty smart you know then i think with the way things are looking right now dortmund have the upper hand if if we do negotiate for sancho dortmund have the upper hand on us so i think at, at max you get 30 35 yeah chevy already sold in sancho for the right price um, anything less than 50 mil not selling um like sure has just pointed out now dortmund are being really smart about this they don't have to play him every game Right. Yeah. So it's not a situation where they know that if if he keeps playing, if he they play him, he plays his life out. Then they're gonna have to spend more yeah. to buy him. But if he's used sparingly, they can lower the price. And one thing we know about Dortmund, like they're not big spenders when it comes to the transfer market. They are, they are not big spenders. Dortmund, it will be an absolute. It would be fraudulent for them to buy him back for 25 after they sold him for 75. Like, yeah. That would be fraudulent. That wouldn't even look nice on us. Like, it, it, it would just it would be like a laughing stock. So even if we don't have plans for him, even if we're just going to let him rot on the bench, we cannot sell him for less than 50 million. Just, you know, at, at the very least, we still have a reputation to, to protect. He's still young so as well. We, like, he's only what, 23? He's young. Yeah. 24? So, 24, maybe. Yeah. Where much? Yeah, so when Manchester United, we still have a reputation to to protect. We can't be letting Dortmund play us about like that. So I'd only sell him for the right price, and I'd I'd I'd, I'd keep him if 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 we don't get any offers. I mean, no, we're not accepting any offers less than fifty million. In my opinion, we shouldn't. Um, anything less than fifty mil, no no chance. And I'll keep him even if we have the wingers like Ganacho and you know Anthony. What's wrong with having a strong bench? We, we keep saying yeah. all the time, like, our bench is dead. We need all the players we can get. And if we get another manager that can get the best out of him, he's a quality player, why not? I'll yeah. keep him. Agreed. Agreed. Uh, another name, I don't want to spend too much time on this guy, but Mason Greenwood, uh, currently on loan. Uh, Getafe, obviously, I'm not going to go into all the stuff that has happened because it would be here forever and then just people yeah. in the comments can't be asked with it. He's valued at 15 million, which is insanity, by the way. For, if you just base it on his pure talent alone and how young he is and stuff, 15 million is ridiculous. He's obviously on loan at Getafe. I don't imagine Ineos bringing him back. I might be wrong, but I don't imagine him bringing him back. He is a sellable asset. For me, again, he's in the Sancho camp. He's got to be like 40, 50 plus. At least. This He'll guy's definitely worth, be. The talent definitely worth, be. Like, obviously, he probably won't go to a Premier League team because I don't think they want to deal with the press and then the, the hassle that comes with it. So you're probably looking at Spanish, Italian, German maybe, yeah. that kind of teams. He's got to be going for 40, 50 at, at least, anti Chivy. Like, you can't be letting this kid go on the cheap because of the pure... Because one, it's an academy prospect, so you've got to maximise that profit because it's all mm-hmm. profit. And two, the talent yeah. that he has has to be a big big sell-on, doesn't it? Well, yeah, well, there are rumours of Barcelona and Atletico Madrid being interested yeah. in him. And the Spanish, the, you know, the community or whatever society, they don't seem to care. So, you know, it's, it doesn't really, you know. So, if we can get the right price for him again, so um, I wouldn't say selling for cheap. On this occasion, though, because of the heat that might come with his name, it might be a good idea to just sever ties. Just yeah, me take, personally, just take what you can get, me, basically. Yeah, just just seven times. Me personally, I've 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 forgiven him. I've forgiven him. Everybody involved has forgiven him. I'm not excusing what he did. What he did was terrible. It was abhorrent. It was disgusting. But me personally, if the the people who have been affected the most by this have seemed to let him go on, and on, on top of it, he seems remorseful. Like he's not walking around with his chest out or anything. He seems genuinely remorseful. So personally, I've forgiven him, and I'd just like to see him just go and just live his life somewhere else. Just you know, it's it's a shame he can't work out, but yeah. But then that doesn't mean he needs to go for fifteen mil. He, we still need to get some money for him. So if it means we loan him and then loan him and keep loaning him until somebody buys him, that's fine. But fifteen million—that's bullshit. Ridiculous, isn't it? But yeah, what are you, what are you saying price-wise, Charles? I think with the kind of season he's having right now, 
and you know there's still a lot of games left for uh, Getafe this season. He, he if he if he continues on this you know trajectory that he has been on at, uh, you know there uh, this season, and we've all Atletico are very seriously interested in uh, you know interested in actually bringing him in, and I think same same as Barcelona. So in that case, United do have an upper hand in this trans you know in this negotiation. You know you've got two clubs who are genuinely interested in bringing him in, and you know. If we are able to play it right, I think 40 million is the bare minimum for Greenwood right now with mm-hmm. the way he's performed this season. And I think if United are able to play it right between Atleti and Barca, you probably could get, you know, 50 as well. Mm-hmm. You know, with the way he's playing right now, and 50 million for someone coming through the academy, you know, works wonders for us in FFP as well, and could be reinvest, can genuinely be reinvested. In, I, I think probably in the best direction. So. Yeah. Yeah, I think can can range easily between forty to fifty five. It just depends on how United are able to proceed between Barca, Atleti, and I think Juve as well, and a couple of other Italian clubs yeah. are interested in yeah. him as well. So you, when you've got these many people interested, if you play it well, you can probably get even if he's around, you know, being mentioned around forty, you can easily get more than you know ten or fifty million more when you've got that also, these many clubs interested. I'll tell you what, you'll be really pissed off that John Moto and, and Richard Arnold have left. Yeah. Because <laughs> getting for cheap, yeah. Oh, but are they? will be pissed <laughs> off, yeah, because yeah, they could have gone for like eight million or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Next one. I put I've chucked him in as a wild card because I don't genuinely believe he's gonna leave this summer just because of how much money he spent on him. Anthony obviously paid mm-hmm. insane money for him. It, like yeah. Ridiculous money. I think we got 90, 95 million euros, whatever it was. Something was, about that, yeah. He was valued by Ollie's team, I think a couple of years before, at 20, 25 20. million. Yeah. He's on transfer mark to 28 million euros. I don't see him leaving. I, I, I would cash in on him because I just don't think it hasn't worked. I don't think it's worked. And I think, obviously, you're not going to get 90, whatever it is. You're never going to get anywhere near that. But I think you could cash in on him potentially. But I don't think I don't see him going. Shreyas, what do you think, Anthony? I don't think that Ineos will actually let go of him, because one thing about Anthony is that works in our favor is he's young. You know, because I think if you go in for if if we actually you know really try to actually offload him this summer, I don't know if we if we he will be able to generate like one third of the price that we paid him for. Like we won't even get thirty five million for Anthony right now. Because he's genuinely not had as great of a season. He's been in and out of the team. So, I just don't see it happening. I think if Ineos do keep him for another window, and even if he has a semi-half-decent season, like, I'm not saying he, you know, completely rips it apart, but even if he has a semi-decent season, like McTominay has done this season, like McTominay, previous window was being quoted around 30 million. And everyone thought that if we don't let go of him, you know, this summer, his price will drop. But he's gone out, he's, you know, he's a top scorer in the Premier League. He's probably, you know, lifted his price by about five or ten million, and that does work for us. Maybe if Anthony has that sort of a season like McTominay has had, even a semi-half decent season, maybe it just helps us in getting an extra five or ten million for him, which does work for us a lot because we paid a lot for him and he's got a long contract. So I think Ineos will actually play it quite smart when it comes to Anthony. Yeah. Any comments on Anthony, Chibi? Yeah, just very quickly. Uh, realistically, I don't think we'll see him go. Um, and it won't be the smart thing either. I think we, you know, we have to also think financially as well. Yeah. Uh, the best thing to do is keep him one more season under a new manager to see if we can increase, see if he increases in value, and then you know, and then see if we can sell him off. It's it won't be too hard to sell him off to be honest, because I don't think he's on crazy wages. So that's yeah, that's he's on around one one hundred one twenty five. Yeah, so still, yeah, yeah. So it won't be it won't be crazy wages. Um, so yeah, it would be the smart thing to do is just to keep him really. Next one. Uh, again, maybe a slight wild card, but I have seen some sort of stuff going on around it. Luke Shaw. Um, on his day, arguably one of the best left-backs in the league. I think he's phenomenal, yeah. for, especially for the way we play in that link-up with Marcus Rashford. I think he's a fantastic player. However, he's had one season in the last, I think it's the last five, where he's been fit for more than 70% of games, and that was the Ten Hag's first season, and obviously he was fantastic. Very injury prone, very sort of. Is I think it was since the leg break really that that massive leg break. He's not been the same since, yeah. and he just seems to be getting more injuries and being out longer. For me, I 
would be if you're going to be cutthroat, I would sell him just because we're getting to the point now. It's like when is he ever going to be available? We've had Malasio with this whatever it is that's going on with him. We've then stupidly got rid of Alvaro Fernandez on top of that, so we've been left with no fit fullbacks. Medical department, that's another question entirely because they should be sacked. Um, and then Luke Shaw has been un- unavailable for most of the season and most of the other seasons previously. If we're being cutthroat, Shreyas, is Luke Shaw on the sort of list of people you sell? Yeah, but I think the only reason he might not really be sold is because we've got too many positions to actually fill in right now. Yeah, you've got to fill in a couple of centre backs. You've got to fill in for a midfielder. You've got to fill in for a winger, and then on top of that, another striker as well. So I think that's why Luke Shaw might survive the cut. But I think, yeah, in an ideal atmosphere, I don't think Luke Shaw would because from what I did hear, you know, when Ineos did come in, they don't really rate Luke Shaw as highly because of his injuries. They rate him as you know with the kind of quality he brings to the team, but they, because of the injury concerns, one thing that they've always quoted around since they've coming in come in is when it come to, comes to players that they want to work around availability more. They want to build in a squad that is, you know, that is able to stay fit and that, that is able to stay reliable throughout the course of the season. And when you've got a first team player who's out for I would say more than even half of the season, it's going to be tough. It's genuinely going to be tough. So I think in an ideal space probably you do offload Luke Shaw, but just because of the amount of gaps that we've got in this team, I think he survives next season. You agree, Chivi? Yeah, I agree. I agree. But realistically, I don't think I don't think we we sell him. Um, I still think Luke Shaw is an asset. The reason why he keeps getting injured is because he's been overplayed. We just yeah. keep yeah. playing him and playing him, and then we don't let him um, recover. We don't give him enough time to recover. We've got no keep backup. Playing him. There's nobody to back up. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. He's so the only one. Let- Exactly. If we have a, a competent backup, someone to, to fill in, give him time to recover and manage the situation, because he's never going to be fully fit because of all the injuries, but manage it at a time when we're strained, he might actually come in and be very, very important for us. Let's not forget that Luke Shaw doesn't only play left back, he's beginning to yeah, play exactly. centre back. And he's really good at being a centre back as well. It's fantastic he can player. even drop into the midfield. Yeah, he drops no into the midfield. Though. He's really good in attacking. So if we're able to manage the situation, I think we look sure we don't need to sell him. We just need to manage that whatever is happening there with the injuries. Yeah. And that means getting another centre back or another left back to supplement. So yeah. we should keep him this like Sharia said, it's far more important positions that we need to be focusing on. Yeah. So for now we keep him. Realistically, yeah. I don't think any yeah. I don't think we, we get any value selling him right now anyway. Uh, his transfer so, yeah. mark, his transfer mark value is thirty five million euros, which was higher. Than I thought it would be, but there you go. Mm, I, I don't know. think I don't think it's that high, but there you go. I think in a fair space with the kind of player he is, he should be rated much, much, much higher. Yeah, but yeah, but how go. old is he? Thirty one, thirty. Exactly. So yeah, yeah uh, there's no chance we're getting thirty five now. Next one, we've got two right backs. I think Dallo and Arwam Saka. I think Dallo is probably going to stay because he just signed a long-term deal, so I don't see him going anywhere. Yeah. So he's not on the list. Yeah. But I put Wampisaka on it just because I think beyond, like I would keep personally, I would keep him because he offers something completely different to what Dallo does. He's one of the best one-on-one defending uh, fullbacks in the league, if not Europe. He's phenomenally good at it. Obviously, there was a bit of a stupid decision against Liverpool to slide in like that, but it's few yeah, and far between with this guy. Like yeah. it doesn't happen very yeah. often. The stupid decision. Most of the time, he's spot on. I personally would keep him, but I could see them cashing in on him and getting a young right back to come in. His transfer max value is twenty million euros. Chivy, what are you feeling with Wan Bissaka? Do you see no. him going? I know, I know, you don't want him to go, but. Could you see no, 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 no. It's not about me wanting yeah. to go. It's just it, it makes no sense whatsoever. So no, unless a new manager comes in and wants a different right back, uh, then we sell him. But then we don't get that much money for him anyway. Yeah. So no, yeah. It doesn't make sense to me. Yeah. It's I think not if... a pressing. It's not a pressing position that we need to sell. So why bother with that position when we have other pressing issues? So the smart thing to do would be to keep him at least in our season. I think, personally, I think if Ten Hag stays, he might be on his way out. Because, uh, and the reasoning for it has been because I've personally seen Ten Hag does, when, when everyone is available, Ten Hag does favour Dallow a lot more. 
in comparison to Van Bissaka, you know, when when everyone is fit. And apart from it, I just I just think that when it comes to Van Bissaka, personally, I really wouldn't sell him because I think he's someone who brings something completely different to what Dalo brings to the table. And in set games, you need that sort of a profile to come in and just you know calm the game down, just see the game out. Uh, but I just think that Ten Hag doesn't rate him as highly, and for some reason, and I think every single window we get linked with right backs. Like genuinely, since Ten Hag has come in, we've been linked with right backs every single window, and with and just out of the blue, sometimes it just comes out, you know, links that you know, Wambasaka is not rated as highly by Ten Hag. Wambasaka is not someone that Ten Hag. I I just think that if Ten Hag does stay, he might be on his way out next season. And with the rumors coming about Olise that they're trying to work him in in a swap deal and with everything, I just don't know. But I think if I think if a different manager does come in, I I don't think then Van Bissaka would leave because any other any other manager coming in, I think they would want that sort of defensive stability at the back. You cannot go in every single game expecting to you know just you know keep bombing on from the right hand side. And all fairness to Dalo, he's been decent this season. He's been our most available defender at the back. But yes, apart from it, I think in set games you would need Van Bissaka's qualities in a game as well. Yeah, let's uh, rattle through with these because uh, going on yeah. a lot yeah. longer than I wanted to. Yeah. Um, Ericsson, is he gone? I, th- this I think he's gone. I think he's he's like, said it well, himself. He's not anyway, so. yeah. yeah, but I think not... he said it himself. He's gone. Don't, I don't see us getting what his transfer amount value is ten million. But you see, he's getting ten million for Ericsson. I think seven or eight. JV. No, <laughs> let's go seven then. Jimmy, Jimmy's not giving me a number. Uh, Casemiro, <laughs> Casemiro is, yeah. I know Chivy feels a certain way, but I can see him going. I think his head's gone. I, I don't think he's he's here anymore mentally. Whether his ability is gone or not, or whether it's a system, there's a debate there. I think his head's gone. I think he goes this summer. Uh, his transfer amount value is thirty million euros, but. Maybe we get 25 for him if he goes to Saudi. Maybe. I think the only reason he... Well, first first of all, like I, I keep hearing this a lot when people talk about Casemiro and Varane. They always mention Saudi. Those guys are professional players. They, I don't... Want they, to win. Even if they're they available, have, they won't go to Saudi. They have no interest in going to Saudi. They exactly. want to money, play in Europe. Lots of money. No. Absolutely not. No. I'm, calling, I'm no telling interest. you now. I'm telling you now he goes to Saudi in the summer. Casemiro goes back to Brazil before he goes back to Saudi. Yeah. I'm telling you that now. Yeah. When you yeah. when when you hear the type of player that he is, the profile of player that he is, he would rather go back to he's he wants he enjoys football. He's a student of the he anyway, let's not get into that. Um the only reason we sell him is because of his wages. Yeah. That's yeah. it. Yeah. That's the only thing. Yeah. The only reason we sell him because of his wages, not because of his physical ability. Any manager coming in wants to keep Casemiro. Would, you, re- that. would yeah. you re-sign him but on lower wages? Yes, absolutely. If, if, if he's willing to do that, if yeah. we can re- renegotiate his, 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 the attempt of his deals, because we have Casemiro, I'll, I'll be very quick, Casemiro, McTominay, Kobe Mainu, who was the oh, no. central midfielder? No, central. Like, not not uh, back, it's central. Casemiro, Eric- McTominay, Mino, Ericsson. and Ericsson, and Mount. Mount. Yeah, okay. Fine. So, Ericsson goes... McTominay goes. Mero goes, McTominay goes, and then what? So we're left with who? With Mount and and Bruno and copy. Like it doesn't. Make, yeah, it doesn't make sense. We're not going to buy two centre midfielders. It's absolutely it does not make sense because we still have defenders to buy. We still have strikers. Yeah. to buy. We have a winger to buy. There's no way we're we're selling two central midfielders. Do you think? So if, if we if we're going to sell Casemiro and keep Scott McTominay. I don't understand because <laughs> yeah exactly because Ericsson is gone so it's, it's yeah. going to be either yeah. Ericsson is gone so it's going to be either Casemiro or McTominay do you think and then we still say go on do you think if Ten Hag stays Casemiro goes but if Ka- Ten Hag goes Casemiro stays possibly possibly yeah, under, yeah. yeah if yeah uh, possibly but I think uh, if someone like a Nagelsmann comes in they won't let they won't let I Casemiro can guarantee you go. this that that, that, that um, no new manager comes in would would, would would veto Casemiro leaving? Like yeah. they would, they would definitely keep him. He's he's a no then. We'll uh, we'll chalk him off. Just speaking of Scott McTominay, Shireas. Yeah. I would say he's high on the list of sellable assets. Personally, uh, West Ham were interested in him. I believe last year with 
Maguire, who we will get on to. His transfer mark value is 32 million euros. I reckon we could get more than that. I think his, his value is a bit more than that. It's academy prospect again, so it's all profit. I'm saying we could sell him for 40 million, personally. Yeah, yeah. Look, we were getting 30 million for him from both West Ham and Newcastle this season itself. And before I even, you know, before negotiations start for him, just slap the title, prim- Manchester United's Premier League top scorer on him. Yeah. As simple as that. Like, genuinely as simple as that. And I think, I genuinely think, you know, if he moves to a club like a West Ham, I think they can actually generate a lot more for him. Uh, and actually get a lot more out of him in that setup as to what we do. Um, and I think this season he's raised his value a lot. He's been scoring goals. He's got a goal, I think, in the Champions League as well. So, he's be for the role that he's deployed in, his task is to actually score goals for us. And in that aspect, he's been doing it for us, you know, not on a consistent basis, but he has been doing it. So, yeah, I think it, in a, I would say, if, once again, if United play it right, can get 40 million for him. Okay, Same. Yeah, 40 mil. Cool. Yeah, Let's put yeah. That down. Sellable assets. Yeah, we should be yeah. definitely. I love him. I really like Scott McTominay. Honestly, I, yeah. I, I, I would like him to stay, but he's, he's someone. Who, after, yeah. He just has a soft spot somehow. <laughs> I just, I, I just want him to come off the bench and then just yeah. offer something different. <laughs> yeah. I don't yeah. want him to start games. No, and no I want him I... further up the pitch. Yeah. Yeah. Bring him on as a striker. Yeah. I don't give a shit. Just bring him on yeah. as a striker and just stay in the box. <laughs> just stay there and just fucking get your head on stuff. Like, well, I like, I like, I, I, I love him. I really yeah. like him. Yeah, yeah. No, he's, I he's, just don't he, want him in the midfield. <laughs> yeah, he's everything United you want in he. He's passionate. He gives a shit about him. United. He gives everything. He works hard. Like, yeah, he, he's everything. Uh, Harry Maguire again, another sellable asset. It looked like he might have gone last summer. West Ham again interested in negotiations didn't think his transfer mark value is 20 million which considering we played 80 million for him is insanity by the way what were West Ham quote they going for like 30 were they trying to get him yeah it was like 30 35 30 35 like yeah. Yeah. yeah so do you think 35 fair price for Harry Maguire yeah okay. I think it'll be it'll be in the same range as 30 and 35 but but I think this season United will be United needs to be in more serious as to offloading him because yeah. moving into next season, you need centre backs, and you know you with both Lissandro and Varane being as injury prone, Lissandro as well. You know, you need centre backs, and you need cover. Varane could be leaving as well, so his contract's up at the end of the season, so he could be then gone you need anyway. To, and then, then Johnny, you need Evans, two Johnny Evans is on a, a one-year deal, so he could effectively not be here. So that's two centre backs gone already. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like yeah. you need to bring in. I think more. either way, I think moving into next season, either way, you need to. And the only way United can actually get out of it is if Kambala is actually steps up even more by the time the season ends. Yeah, well, we can't rely on Kambala to be honest. And, yeah, yeah. And and for me, the, the way I feel about the Harry Maguire situation is uh, if we, if we're being honest, like there's not that many sellable assets that we have. We no. can't really yeah. lose that much money from from the players that we have at the moment, which is quite terrible. But at the end of the day. Maguire is one of the only people that we can actually make money off. Yeah. yeah. He's had and a relatively would... decent season, so you can exactly. actually make something out of him. Yes. So I would say if 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 um Johnny Evans is leaving, I would say renegotiate with Iran for a lesser fee. Yeah. Keep him, get another centre back and then sell um Harry Maguire. That yeah. way, we're not playing Varane every single game. Nope. He has, like, just like Luke Shaw, he has time to recover. And then we have um, Lissandro, we have a new centre-back. And then we can do that. So we can, we can, you know, and then the season we can after... We rotate a lot better. A lot we can rotate better. a lot better. And then you have experienced players, really good players that we rotate with. Because to be fair, when we're playing in a good system, when he's fit, Varane is a really good uh, player. Yeah. So, Sam Maguire. So, if you look at your centre back sort of like thing next season, you could potentially have Lissandro and for argument's sake, let's just say Branthwaite. I'm not saying it's going to be him, but let's just say it is him. Mm-hmm. Lissandro, Branthwaite, Quam- Kamwala, Varane, and then and Lindelof. Lindelof. Would you be happy with Lindelof? Yeah. 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 Cool. And Selma White. Right. Final one. Marcus Rashford. Again. Probably one of the sellable assets we have, uh, like a major sellable asset. His transfer map value is 60 million euros. I think PSG were looking at like 70 million or something like that a couple of seasons ago. He's had 
a terrible season by his own standards, but had a phenomenal season last season. Got a new contract, big wages and stuff like that. He's United through and through, but for me, he's very inconsistent. And his head, I don't, I don't know if something's happened outside of football because he's, he just doesn't seem like he's enjoying football or interested. Chivy, would you sell him? Would you cash in on his potential value? It's not realistic. It's not a realistic um, option because nobody's going to pay those wages. Yeah. And I don't think he wants to go to Saudi Arabia. And PSG has, Romano has confirmed that PSG have no interest in Marcus Rashford. That yeah. was the only outlet. But Romano said they're not even looking at him. So there's no one we can sell him to, to be honest. Um, so sadly, I mean, if it was up to me, you know, I'd, I'd sell him. But I don't think anyone's going to pay a big transfer fee and yeah, and then pay a big then pay big wages like yeah. there's no one unless Newcastle or something. You know, yeah, they've got money. because the yeah. thing is, any club which comes in first off, they'll at least have to shell out at least fifty five or sixty million at least. That's the bare yeah. minimum. And yeah. after you know they pay that, then they have to negotiate with Rashford and big wages. And yeah. Yeah. yeah, and even if they, I think even if you get a good deal on him, you'll still be paying about three hundred thousand per week to him. The That's a lot to invest afford, in one yeah. player itself. The only people who can afford Marcus Rashford are PSG, Real Madrid, Newcastle. Newcastle. That's it. Nobody else can pay that money yeah. or even anything close to it. So he's staying. Yeah, that's yeah. that's the way I see it. I agree. I agree. Right, that is the team so far. So with the money raised. So we're getting about 40 million from Scott McTominay. We're getting about 35 for Harry Maguire. We, I said 40, 45 for Sancho. Chewy said 50. So let's split it at 45. Uh, Greenwood, 45. So we're coming up with 165 million euros. We're raising for no yep. sales if we if we sell those players for those prices, which I think is a decent chunk of change, personally. Obviously, we, yep. you're yeah. never going to sell all of those players because <laughs> it's just... I would say even, even if you if you're not able to yeah. generate as much and we generate like thirty or forty million less, you still generate about one hundred and twenty five or one hundred and thirty five yeah. just from sales. Yeah. And if we sell a hundred and if we if we get a hundred and twenty, I'll be happy. Yeah, yeah. Even, I think I'll even if you hit the happy. I think even if you hit the you know the hundred million mark just from outgoing itself, considering yeah. that Ineos are going to be you know putting in cash anyways exactly. on top of that you get that 100 million boost as well i think you know, we'll be looking at a much much better picture when it yeah. comes to you know players we could actually end up going in for yeah. yeah yeah it does look a bit rosier in the summer um potential people coming in there's a couple of people in the chat I'll just read these last comments then we'll get off uh it's sam saying time to go for sure i reckon we can get 45 for him from newcastle the injury status might be a factor after the outside doctor assessment different from club's doctors. There you go. Uh, Lucky Singh, I'm pushing for Amadou Onana and Tony Cope, Cooper Minor. Uh, I'm sorry Cooper if I Minor. mispronounced that. Yeah, yeah Cooper Minor. Uh, and he said, if we're serious, we can get 50 million based on the season he's had. I think he's talking about uh, Matomini there. Varane out, Lindelof out, Lucky Singh. We need to keep Evans, get to Debo or Frimpong or Kim Min Jae. We're never getting Kim Min Jae out and buying. <laughs> never, <laughs> not happening. Not that boat has sailed. Yeah, lads, thanks for coming on. Apologies, it ran over a little bit. I tried to keep it on oh, track, but I could be here over. for three hours. Yeah, uh, exactly. <laughs> uh, we'll be back tomorrow with the preview for the Bournemouth game. Even though I don't want to do it because fucking bomb, <laughs> Bournemouth away, man. Who gives a shit? Yeah. Um... In the season we've had, that we're playing Bournemouth away. It's like who gives a fucking toss? And we'll it? somehow yet make it a lot more exciting for any third person watching yeah. it. I'm going to put cherries on my shopping list this weekend. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, lads, thanks for coming on. Uh, follow us on socials. They're above my head there. Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, uh, Twitter. Oh, now X. Yeah. Sorry. Check out check out Shreya's OnlyFans as well. Oh, yeah. Shreya's OnlyFans. Subscribe. <laughs> Link in the chat. Go check that out. Uh, check out the video I did on JC Wilcox yesterday. It's interesting. Nick was supposed to drop pros and cons, but... I don't know what's happened to that. Yeah. We'll figure it out. Um, yeah. And then, yeah, subscribe if you're new here. Drop us a like, drop us a comment, all the good stuff. Cheers, lads. Speak to you tomorrow. See ya.